is up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today, it's another episode of the Let's Play, but it's not just any episode. It is our one year anniversary. Take a look, the Let's Play started a year ago today, and I am so excited. Guys, we made a year, and there's a lot more to come in the future. So thank you guys so much for the continuous support throughout the year. I don't care when you started watching. Some of you may have seen the first episode. Some of you may have started in the 92nd episode. It doesn't matter to me as long as you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One year. Wow. <laughs> so, in memoriam of one year, as you can tell, I have completed the subscriber palace and I think it looks fantastic. Now, it took a long time to save up all this quartz, but I've finally done it and because I just went on vacation, I had two very, very long road trips and I was able to complete this awesome palace. Yeah, so here are the credits for the build. It was really, really cool. I just felt like I had to do it. It, it was awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on. These are the four names on the brand new sign in the Subscriber Palace. We have EG Sav, Piano, Oregano, Sef, Like a Sir, and Hero T. Now, the two comments I want to talk about a little bit more are Sef, Like a Sir's, he wanted me to do tipped arrows, and because I'm doing a brewing stand today, that might happen in the next episode. Hmm? Wink, wink. <laughs> and also, you may be wondering, well, how in the world did Hero T get on get in the subscriber palace for just commenting? Uh, he he. No, <laughs> it wasn't that simple. There's actually a story behind it. He, I just noticed he commented, replying to so many of you guys. He was just getting into conversations in the comment section. I thought it was really, really cool. So I thought he deserved a spot in today's video. <laughs> So, and now that we've gotten that out of the way, I think it's time. I want to try something real quick. I want to try something. Let me go ahead. <laughs> Let me go try something real quick. Oh, oh what? 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 <laughs> oh, whoa. This looks so weird. Ah, okay, I think I'm done with that. <laughs> yeah, that was the city texture pack. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do first in today's episode is talk about the names of my horses. So in the last episode, I asked for you guys to name my horses, and I was going to go ahead and decide on a few of the names today, but really, there were just too many great names, and I don't know exactly what you guys want, because the way comments work, it's just not that easy. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below. For those of you who really, really care about the names of the horses, you can go ahead and vote. I'll have names all all over the place and you guys can go ahead and vote on the ones. I'll just leave most of the good ones I found in the comments section and you guys can uh, vote on which horse gets which name. So I think that'll be pretty cool. You guys will have to participate though and hopefully in next episode we'll have a full stable of named horses. <laughs> Also, because 0.15.0 was properly released, I can finally show you guys my wolf farm. It's finally set up. It kept glitching out in the betas, but now that the release has come, I haven't had this mess up in a while. And as you can tell, we've got each and every color of sheep and three of each sheep in each stall. So I would say it's a pretty successful farm. I can go ahead and grab any color I need fairly easily, so that is really, really cool. I like it a lot. And I also have another finished farm to show you guys, the sugarcane farm. I just want to show you guys what's up over there. Okay, guys, so I think I showed this last episode, but if you guys missed it, this is the sugarcane farm, and it is working fantastically. I'm going to be spending a lot more time over here later on, so the, the sugarcane will grow a lot more, because the way it works is I don't think the farms grow if you're not nearby, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time over here on this next farm today, so hopefully we'll get a lot more sugarcane. I also want to modify this and add the railroad tracks underneath like I was, I, I think I started it. I think you guys may have seen it. Let's see if it's uh, if it's still there. I don't know if I removed it all. Let's find out. Oh yeah, the remnants of some of the tracks are here. So what I want to do is I want to make a collection system that funnels up uh, through with a hopper minecart so it'll grab anything on the sand blocks and bring it up to the uh, chest. That's the goal. We'll see how well that works though. Anyway, so I'll be working on that, but other than that, I think the farm is pretty much done. So it's time to work on our next, well not farm actually, it's more of a station. This, well you can probably tell by the title, we're making a potion brewing station! <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. 
And a creeper just blew up that, so <laughs> we gotta clean this up now. Oh, man. Okay, so you guys have been asking for this for a while, like a crazy long time. So I thought I would finally get it done. I would build a brewing station. Now, this isn't going to be a crazy station, although it's gonna be pretty good, and it's gonna be able to brew most of the potions in the game uh, automatically, which is gonna be really, 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 really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow design by Minecraft with dummies. I'm gonna do a few changes for Pocket Edition, of course, but I also wanna extend it and make it available for many more potions. His was pretty small. I wanna make it much bigger. So hopefully, if all goes as planned today, we can have a little bit of fun. Okay, so let's start with the placement. Now, this is where it's going to start, and it's going to go down this way, and the, all the ingredients and all the hoppers and redstone will be this way. So this is where it starts. That's where it will be going. So I guess to start off, you're gonna need uh, this kind of situation right here. Then what we're gonna do is place a uh, a thingy ho hopper, hopper on this uh, under the uh, under the. Oh, okay. Let's start this. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Okay, so place a hopper connected to the chest underneath the brewing stand. Then go ahead and place one on the side. Make sure it's uh, funneling down into the side. Then I think we're also going to need one on the top. And can I do? Oh yeah. Okay, that works well. Next up, we're going to do this. So go ahead and place a block behind the, uh, what's it called? The brewing stand. <laughs> and then what we need to do is place a comparator on top of this block. Make sure the double end is facing the, uh, the hopper. Now what we need to do is place 22 items in the hopper. Now the reason is, well, it's pretty, well, it's actually kind of weird, but it gets the job done. If you have 22 items inside of a hopper, I'll just use dirt, I guess. Yeah, we'll use dirt. Actually, we'll be needing a few different things, so make sure they're different items and make sure there are 22 items. The reason is, is things, once they're added to this, uh, once they're added to this hopper, it's going to change from 22 items to 23 items, and that will increase the signal of redstone power from 1 to 3, which is going to trigger this whole system. So, make sure you have 22 items in there, and you gotta leave one extra spot for ingredients. If it doesn't make sense now, it will in a minute, so go ahead, build back one, down one, and leave that ground block. Then we also need to build over one in this direction. Climb on up top, and we need to string redstone dust across these three blocks we just placed, and then place a redstone repeater facing that way, just like that. Now this is where blocks are going to be showing, so uh, this will actually show in the design. So I like, I'm gonna use uh, yellow stained clay for this. You guys can use whatever you want, but uh, this block is going to be showing. You won't be able to see anything back there. This one will be visible, so make it look cool. Uh, anyways, now what we've got to do is move along, and I need redstone torch. Do I not have any redstone torch? I don't have redstone torches. Well, time to make some. And now that I've got them, go ahead and place yours right there so it's next to the repeater on this block. Now what we need to do is a little bit different. We need to... Do oh, what's going on, dude? Okay, relax. You need to relax. Please stop this madness. <laughs> okay, so now what we need to do is go underneath this uh, repeater. No, not repeater. Redstone torch. I, You know, one of these days I'll be able to explain things correctly. <laughs> Anyways, now what we need to do is grab a dropper, which I do have. Yes, I do. Perfect. And make sure the dropper is facing... Not that way. Okay, this is going to be hard. There we go. Make sure the dropper is facing this way. Then go ahead and attach a hopper onto the front of the dropper. So really, items will just go back and forth. It's only to cause a impulse. So you don't act... It's not... It, it, it makes sense, and it doesn't make sense at the same time. It's just making an impulse. And I just realized it's a little bit hard to follow, so what I'm gonna do now is just get rid of these extra blocks so that you'll be able to see exactly how I'm doing this, and then I guess I'll just place them back later. But for now, this is what it's looking like. So that is where this is going relative to everything else. Now, next to this hopper we just placed, go ahead and place a comparator facing away, then a redstone repeater to repeat the signal, make it stronger, and then add a stone block right there. So, that should be good. Next up, we're going to add a block in front of this hopper to the side and put a lever on top. Now, this is going to trigger the whole entire system, so it's very, very important. Where? Oh, there they are. There they are. Okay, so yeah, make sure that this is... Well, I guess we could should put it probably down. I think we need to put it down, but this is where the water bottles are going to be going into the brewing stand. So this is basically has the power of turning the whole thing off, because if there's no water bottles, there'll be no brewing. So that's pretty important. Now, where will the water bottles be coming from? Well, right here. So go ahead and place a chest just like this, and uh, it's going to be pretty 
big, but it'll get the job done. Now, if we run over here, I believe I have some glass, so we can actually make these water bottles. Lovely. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We can make a ton of them. Holy cow, perfect. And I can also go fill them all up in my, uh, in my pool. Lovely. And that's doing the trick for sure. <laughs> so, so I'll have to go pick those extra ones up that are falling down. Uh, I'll make sure they don't despawn, but let me go ahead and start putting these in the chest. Okay, that actually works really well. I just gotta run back and forth a few times. And that's it. It's times like this I really, really wish water bottles stacked because this chest is going to fill up really, really fast. But there we go. So we've got almost a full chest of water bottles. Now make sure that they're not going into the brewing stand. So you got to have the lever down to start this build. Now this is where the fun comes. So extend this block all the way across as far as you want to go. Now this is where you can customize it on your own. I'm going to just bring it out this far for now. And what we need to do is place a redstone dust right there. And then we also need a block on top of this dust no on top there we go just to make sure that that dust and this dust do not connect and then after that we can just string this redstone dust across the whole entire build this is where the ingredients will go and this is where it gets interesting once you've done that, fill in this row. I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't have <laughs> taken it out. Uh, fill in this row with uh, with blocks, and then what you're going to need to do is grab some repeaters, which I have plenty of, and place them in front of each and every redstone dust along this row, even this one back here. There we go. Perfect. Now we can make our pretty row go across the front, and like I said, this is going to be visible, so make it a cool-looking block, and mine is going to be yellow. Now we need a few more redstone torches, and this is what we will be doing. So go ahead, run over to this side, and place redstone torches on every yellow block uh, that's in front of this stone so make it in front of everyone besides the first one which is right next to the brewing stand do not put one here that's gonna mess the brewing stand up like crazy so just do that now we need to make a snake of hoppers so go ahead and connect one hopper to this hopper a hopper to that hopper and then we've got to connect a ton of hoppers to this one and make sure they're all facing uh that little snake we made and we got to go all the way back to the end and there we go no that one is uh, that did i all the way on the sea uh, okay. <laughs> And now that that's done, go ahead and connect one hopper above each redstone torch and make sure they're facing the hopper behind them. So basically, all of them should lead up to the one behind them, and then the, the, the row in behind needs to be going over this way. So make sure they're not facing this way in the front. In the front, they're all facing backwards besides this one. And, well, I guess that one, because it's going down. <laughs> now, we can place blocks in front of each and every- Okay, again. <laughs> place blocks in front of each and every one of these hoppers. And we can also add levers on top of that. This is where we're going to start adding the ingredients. So, let me go ahead. Where are the levers? There, they're so hard to find in this game. We also need to grab our chests as well. So, place the levers. Oh, don't do it on the last one. But place the levers on each and every one uh, besides the last one. So, just do something just like this there we go and now i'll run up on top of this somehow so, uh, can i i hope so no i can't okay there we go problem solved so now what we need to do is place a chest on top of or behind each lever just like this and we can also what we need to make it a double chest uh to make sure it connects over the hopper so just like this make double chests along each and every lever and the last one without a lever, well, it needs a chest as well because that is where the nether wart's gonna go. So now what we can do is we can assign each and every one of those chests a brand new ingredient. So, uh, I don't know. What should we do? What should we do? Well, first off, we should go ahead and fix this wall and make it look nicer. And now we can add some item frames to show which one does what. Okay, so place item frames under each and every lever, and then go ahead and make sure nether wart is the last one. And then I, I like to personally do gunpowder, redstone, and uh, glowstone, the second to last ones, so like that. And then these ones will be reserved for actual ingredients. So these are the boosts that make it either a splash potion, a level two, or last longer, and then this is required in every single potion. So next up, we've got these slots, which I can go ahead and add my other ingredients too so glistering melon for healing uh sugar for swiftness that for jumping not compared to golden carrot <laughs> for night vision and magma cream and then uh blaze powder i think are the ones i want to make in this one now you could extend this as long as you want i'll probably extend it even longer but for now i think this is good so oh 
Do I want fire resistance or strength? Fire resistance, I think, is more useful. So there we go. That is my design for now. Now, another thing you've got to do is make sure you make the second to last uh, repeater on the back side. Make sure you tick it two times. So, one, two, there we go. And that'll just save the timing. I'm not sure if it's gonna work on Pocket Edition. I've not tested this yet, but I know you need to do that on computer, so there we go. I think that just about does it. I don't know. Let me think. So I just went ahead and added all of my ingredients into each and every one. So that should be good right there. Perfect. So we've got nether wart, uh, gunpowder, glowstone, redstone, magma cream, golden carrots, rabbit's foot, sugar, and glistening melons. Glistering? Glister glistening? I don't know. Anyways. I think that just about wraps it up. Okay, so now what we need to do is go ahead and set up a little pulse. I just went ahead and placed a redstone dust on top of this uh, dispenser, or hopper, excuse me, placed a button here, then hit it, and that caused each and every one of the chests to dispense one time, so there should be one ingredient in each of the hoppers. So now, I think this whole design is pretty much set up. Let's try it, I guess? Let's see. Okay, then what we need to do is flip down the levers we want for our potion. So I want to make a leaping potion with a little bit of duration. So what this is going to do is once you do that, it should set it up where you have a nether wart in the bottom. Oh, and you also need to put a nether wart in this uh, hopper just to get it started. And the nether wart then shoots down this way into the uh, brewing stand, and then everything should fill up behind it. As you can see, I've got the rabbit's foot in this one, and then I've got the red star in that one, and then the next one should house another nether wart so it starts again. Anyway, so now if we flick this on, let's go ahead and see. There we go, and I think, yes, the brewing should begin. So, before, uh, well, I don't know. I, I've never tried this before, so I guess I'll just have to see if it works. I'm not too sure. I really don't know. Also, while that's brewing, let me check how much, how much sugar cane do I have now? Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's run over here and check it out. So what should happen is these should finish up, yes, and then the rabbit's foot should just automatically be added to the new potions. And then I think what should happen is maybe, okay, nothing's behind it. So I'm not sure if it's, oh, you know what? I think what's going to happen is, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so once this empties, uh, this comparator should shoot out another signal and then everything should refill uh, and then fill up with whatever I have triggered down here. So let's see if that works. Okay, so I think I've run into an issue. This is not taking, it's not allowing it to brew. It's just the hopper's taking them directly out. Interesting. I'm not too sure. Oh, you know what? I, let me try something out. Let me try something. Wait a second. Do I have, ah, that could be the problem. Hold on. So I'm placing them in this item hopper on the side. Let's see if that works. Does that work? And then I flick this power on. No. Okay, it's not... It's not allowing them to, hmm. Guys, so I'll have to do some trial and error on that, but once I take out the redstone, hopefully the system, no, yeah, okay, so something's up with the system. It doesn't work as well as I thought it would on Pocket Edition, but it works a little bit. Like, you just can't add, you just you just can't add the, the extra timers just yet. So I'll, I guess I have gotta figure that out. Um, but so far, it, it works sort of well. I mean, works well enough. Just wish I could have had it so it works with the extras. So unfortunately, guys, it doesn't work just yet, but, well, not fully anyways, but hopefully we can get this working in the future. Uh, I gotta figure it out. So don't do this just yet if you're following the tutorial. Just wait a second. I'll see what I can change, and then hopefully we can get that done. But that is what is going to be in this room. So, yeah, it'll be pretty cool once it's done. So while I'm at it, while we're having a little bit of fun, I thought I would go ahead, run upstairs, and just enchant some more stuff, because as you guys can tell, I am level 37, and I think it would be pretty cool. Oh, that's not it. Whoa, whoa, okay. That's my wardrobe. There we go. So with these levels, let's see what I can get for enchantments. All right, so let's put in this sword. Sharpness 3 is not too bad at all. Okay, what about the boots? Blast protection, interesting. What about the pickaxe? Silk touch on the pickaxe, and then the axe is going to have sharpness three. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything else I have to enchant? <laughs> You know, I think I'll do the sharpness three in the sword and knock back two. Okay, that's not bad. So now we can set up for another enchantment. We can get Depth Strider on boots. Uh, Bane of Arthrods four on the sword, so we'll not be doing another sword. <laughs> Unbreaking three on a pickaxe. And Bane of Arthrods four on an axe. What about the pants? Blast protection four. You know, we can do that. We can do blast protection four on the pants. And we should have one more enchantment. Thorns two on boots. Bane of Arthropods again on the sword. What about the pickaxe? Silk touch again on the pickaxe. 
and that should be Bane of our yeah huh interesting interesting so you know what I'll just save these levels because I don't really like any of those enchantments so we'll go ahead back off and let's go fishing to finish off today's episode because it is raining outside and you guys know fishing when raining is always good so let's see what good old fish stick has for me today let's see what can we catch with the magic of the fish stick in the rain I don't know let's see Let's see, let's see. Hopefully we can get something good though. A saddle, oh my god, the first one, the first thing I get is a saddle! Awesome, okay, so that's another one. I think we have three saddles now for our uh, for our lovely horses, so that is pretty cool. Horses and donkeys, I should say, can't leave them out, so that's pretty awesome. I'd say that's a great way to start the day fishing. Fishing when raining is just fantastic, although sometimes, I don't know, I just, I, I like to recast a lot, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are digging that or not. I, I recast all the time. <laughs> A flame one, unbreaking three, and power two bow. That is awesome. We also caught a regular fish and a salmon as well. So we're definitely racking up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, another bite. Okay, just a regular fish. No more bites. No more bites. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. This zombie villager is scaring all my fish away. Dude, relax, bro. Just sit there, just chill, man. You don't, you're not gonna get across that. I have that fence for a reason, sir. So you're not gonna get across that. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> He's just chilling over there, scaring away my fish. Do I need to do something about him? I think I do. Let me go ahead and grab my bow. It's sorry, buddy, but you, you're, you know what? I've had enough, I've had enough. I've had enough, sorry, dude. Oh my, <laughs> that was awesome, that was awesome. I could probably also get this skeleton as well. Let me line it up, there we go. Hit him all the way on the land. He doesn't even know where I am. Oh, geez. Oh, through the water, MLG treat. No, okay, let me get back up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now that those guys are out of the way, I can go back to my fishing. See, the zombie, oh baby. Oh, just a regular fishing rod. Thought it was going to be enchanted. It is not. However, we have caught some pretty awesome stuff, so I can't complain. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what we got left over, and I'll probably catch maybe three more things. We'll do three. Oh, wow, I had something coming in too. I accidentally reeled that in. We have three more catches on the day, and then what I'll do is I'll go cook up the fish as I say my goodbyes, and I gotta figure out how in the world I can fix that. Oh, clownfish, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I gotta figure out how I can fix up the brewing stand because it is not too good right now. It's just a little bit buggy. I'll figure it out, though. We'll be able to get it to work, and I'll show you guys all of it in the next episode. But for now, let's catch some more stuff, shall we? Oh! Oh! Is that an ink sack? Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've caught a salmon and an ink sack so far. Those are the first two catches, so we'll see what we can catch for this last final. Oh, you actually got under. You're a little bit better than your villager friend, but <laughs> you're still gonna die. <laughs> okay, let's see. What is this final catch going to be? We shall wait for it. We shall wait for it, and... Oh! Oh, a puffer fish! Awesome! I can use that in alchemy. Very, very good. So, we'll go ahead and put our fish stick back, and let's go- Oh, you know what I should probably do? Let me grab all of my edible- Okay, what? No! No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, man! And I had stuff in that chest, too. Oh man, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. That's a big bummer. I really like that fishing hut. Did it break anything in here though? Okay, it didn't break any of the interior though, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to fix that off camera. That's a little bit annoying, but we'll go back once more over to the blacksmith and start heating up some of this awesome new food, and I will call it a day there. So the food goes in here. Oh, I didn't even get any of it. I guess, oh man, that's annoying. Well, that stinks. Okay, well, let me see what's over here. I still I still think there's some stuff down here for me, so I can probably just go ahead and grab it. I think I've got plenty. Yeah, why is there a cookie in my... <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I'll grab these fish, and we can call it a day. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. Please do vote on the horsey poll, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, stay frosty, my friends. Peace, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.